Well, first, my um, father passed away here, and he had um, struggled with cancer for about six months. He had a form of leukemia, and then my mother um, had struggled for about a year and a half. Uh, George was a uh, mentally uh, challenged man who was a great friend of, of the St. James Parish. He went to every Mass that we had. Tim and I went to school together from seventh grade on and graduated from the same high school, uh, stayed in touch through the years, and then I lost track of him for quite a while. I had heard that he had moved to California. And then I heard he had came back, and we got in touch, I got in touch with him again after that. And then he went out to another hospice, but money ran out. And um, all of us connected with George, uh, and he had some very dear friends, uh, were quite concerned. And uh, when Tony and Tony Drishaus was willing to take him in, oh my, what a gift, because he had nothing. He had nothing. Well, immediately before, he obviously was in a hospital, and before that he had a small apartment. And when he came back from California, he was actually living in his truck with his dog. My daughter, who's six, had a very, um, you know, wonderful first experience with death. She was in the room both times when my parents died. She was able to hold their hands. She was able to hug them, and she, and she was found on several occasions by herself with my dad, all by herself, talking to him. And it was a very natural um, and beautiful experience, I thought, for a child to have first time. I, I, I hesitate to impersonate George, but George spoke like this. Hi, Father Bob. I sure have a nice place here, don't I? <laughs> and he was the king. He was the king, and, and it was just a grand way to leave life uh, because he just felt not just pampered, but loved and cared for, and obviously he was cared for spiritually, and I kept telling him, now, remember when you see that light, you go to that light, George. Okay, I'll go to the light, uh, but um, it's the way I hope I die sometime. And the care was just wonderful, not only for Tim, but for myself and the friends that did come here, I learned a lot, which if it wouldn't have been for coming here, I would have never known a lot of the things that the staff and John and his wife were able to walk me through a lot of things, which prepared me for a lot of things that I'm grateful for now. He had gotten a piece that he had a peek at heaven. And I had, um, I, I was like, well, Dad, what was it like? And he said, oh, the gardens there are, um, are just beautiful. He kept on talking about the gardens and how beautiful they were and how the colors in, the, um, in heaven were beyond this world. And, uh, and I asked him, so what do, what, is, what are the people like? And he said, he had said, oh, the people are so beautiful. And I said, well, so what do they look like, Dad? <laughs> and my dad, of course, said, oh, Amory, it's not the way they look, it's the who they are. <laughs> well, George decided that there was, there was some lamp, and he said to me one day, you see that light? I think that's the light. No, George, I'm turning that light off right now. <laughs> but I mean, it was all of these, this, this wonderful, sense of peace, of calm, of humor, of being cared for that occurred in this house. And it, what a way to go, huh? I mean, you're going from uh, a place of joy 
to a place of eternal joy. But he certainly got used to heaven right here. I was taking care of both of my parents for a year and a half and uh, pretty much by myself with my brothers coming in intermittently and uh, it was such a relief to know that people really wanted to be here and to take care of them and it wasn't just my parents, it was myself, it was my family, it was the first time that everyone, you know, anyone had said, oh, let me get you a cup of coffee. It was like, wow, I don't have to make the coffee myself. <laughs> so there's chairs, there's the television, uh, the people are always friendly where before that when he was in the hospital it's so sterile and the nurses are so robotic. It was just a relief to get, be somewhere that resembled an actual home setting. I can't explain the feeling of community and, and the feeling of not being alone in the whole process and that was the biggest plus for me was not feeling alone and giving my family a space where we all could be here we could all you know partake in in my both my parents dying process and not feel the least bit uncomfortable and not feel like we're being rushed and having the time that we needed it was wonderful now why does the community need this kind of a place, there are many Georges. There are many people who at the end of their life cannot pay for residential hospice care and have nobody to care for. I, I mean, I've met many people like that. We need, we need this guest house for such people. And uh, I fervently believe that and I ask anybody uh, who um, doesn't see the need for such a place to take a visit with me with some of these kind of people. Thank God uh, for Tony Trishos.